Hi, everyone. Welcome to Microsoft Visio 2019 for advanced users. My name is Elissa Smith. I will be the facilitator for this training. My experience is over 20 years teaching different people how to use Microsoft applications. Now, in this advanced course for Microsoft Visio, we're going to be delving in deeper and looking at topics like how to build advanced diagrams. We're even going to be using 3D shapes. We'll also look at how you can connect your drawings to external data to build things like a pivot diagram from an Excel spreadsheet or even a Gantt chart from a project file. We're also going to look at macros and some other great topics. So please join us for this training event. Now, as always, if you're enjoying the videos, please like and subscribe. And if you're looking to earn certificates and watch videos without ads, sign up for Learn at Any Time, our dedicated online training subscription service. Check the link in the description for more information. If you have any questions you want answered by one of our awesome instructors, please join our off-site community. The link for that is also in the description. And as always, if there are exercise files, you'll find them in the video description below. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Microsoft Visio 2019 for advanced users. We're ready to get logged into our Microsoft Online Visio account. And to do this, we're going to visit uh, Office 365. So I've come to my favorite browser. Again, you could use whatever browser you prefer, but I'm going to type in office.com up in my browser's address bar. This is the doorway to all things Office 365. Now from here, I can either create an account if I don't have one, or I can sign into an existing account, either my work email for Office 365, or I can use, uh, of course, a Microsoft account. In my case, I have one that I'm going to use. You can see how it's already remembering who I am. Now it depends on how you authenticate your account, but I'm going to go ahead and get us logged in so that we can look at Visio. So once I've gone ahead and done my authentication, it's going to take me into my Office 365 homepage, or sometimes affectionately called the Office 365 portal. But what you're going to see here is this is your doorway to all things Office 365. And when we talk about Microsoft Office 365, we're really talking about those applications that are made to run entirely in a web browser. You'll see that I actually have Microsoft Visio down here. It's part of my Office 365 subscription. It is an additional fee to your other Office 365 applications. But this would be my way if I click on it to actually access Visio online, which is something that we're going to talk about in subsequent uh, sessions. But for right now that I'm logged into this, it will actually give me more tools to use inside of the desktop client of Visio. And that's what we're going to look at in a couple of minutes. But this is Visio online. And again, we'll spend a little bit of time here later on. Hi everyone, welcome back. Now in Microsoft Visio, there's a great tool available in the stencils called a quick shape. When you create specific types of drawings based on specific templates, those templates come with specific shapes. Let's go ahead and look at what the quick shapes look like. So first of all, I'm gonna come in and pick a particular type of template that we haven't used before. I'm going to File and New, and then I'm gonna come in and pick a template that has to do with the Active Directory. This is a great way to diagram an Azure Active Directory, for example, in your organization. And this is where we can see a good example of quick shapes. Let me go ahead and zoom in just a little bit on the drawing. And if I come over and look up my shapes task pane, we're gonna see that I have, of course, specific stencils that have to do with creating a diagram about my Active Directory. But also I have a thing called quick shapes. This is where any shape that would be considered the most popular when creating an Active Directory diagram would be placed. So when I click on quick shapes, it's almost like a quick access to the shapes that are used the most. And you'll see here the different shapes. And all I do to add them to my drawing is just left drag them over. And again, as always, I can come to the corners and make them a little bit bigger. But this is allowing me to quick, quickly plot out and start creating a drawing all around my active directory. And again, the idea is that these are specific to that type of a template. And as far as creating the drawing, it's just like we've done before. Now, if I'd like to get more specific, I can also customize the quick shapes, uh, again, stencil. To do that, what I'm gonna do is come into one of the other stencils available when I pick that, again, that 
particular Active Directory template. And if, for example, there is something that is on here that is not on the Quick Shapes menu, I can actually go to the specific stencil. I can come in and I can right click on the particular shape that I want to add to my Quick Shapes. You'll notice here it gives me an option to add to Quick Shapes. So now when I come in and click on my Quick Shapes, I would see that particular shape has been added so that I can use it on the Quick Shapes menu. So again, the steps are really easy. You just go into the specific stencil, you find the Quick Shape you want to add, right click on it, say Add to Quick Shapes, and then when you come into the Quick Shapes menu, you'll see that particular shape has been added, and then you can drag it in and drop it into your diagram that you're creating. Now, over time, you might not need that particular shape anymore. So to return it off the Quick Shapes menu, what you're going to need to do is actually go back to the original stencil where that particular Quick Shape came from. You'll find the shape on that stencil, right click on it, and say remove from Quick Shapes, it places it back to where it was in the stencil. So again, Quick Shapes are basically a way to have uh, really popular shapes for a particular template at your disposal, very similar to the Quick Access Toolbar within Microsoft Office. Hi, welcome back. In this lesson, we wanna look at how you can create an advanced physio diagram based on an idea called BPMN. Now that stands for Business Process Modeling Notation, but it's usually known by the acronym BPMN. Don't try to say that fast. Now to get started, we're just going to have, again, Visio open with no drawings because we're gonna base our BPMN diagram on a template. So to get started, I wanna come in and go to the File Ribbon tab and go to New so that I can see my templates. And then of course, I'm going to come in and just type in that acronym, BPMN, and do a search. Now, there are different types of BPMN diagrams, but we're going to start with the basic one. And all I do is select BPMN diagram. Now, after I do this, there are four subtypes. And we're going to start with this one down here. This is one, when you click on it, that actually allows you to have multiple roles within your BPMN diagram. And then we're, of course, going to select our measurement unit. We'll stick with US and click on Create. Now, what exactly is a BPMN diagram? That's a great question. So BPMN is made to help different groups within an organization or even different companies have a way to have common notation. Say, for example, an organization has a business group that's developed an idea or a process that they need to pass on to their IT department, and the different groups use different types of notation. With a BPMN diagram, they can create a way for the different types of notation and processes to be shared and help to clarify any miscommunication communication. Now in a BPMN diagram, it's common to have some specific types of objects. And so we want to take a minute and look at some of the basic shapes. You'll see here that in my template, down at the bottom, it actually makes suggestions on how I can edit my BPMN diagram. But I just want to start by talking about the shapes. One of the very first groups you'll see in the BPMN basic stencil are what we call the flow shapes or the flow objects. These include squares that are going to represent things like activities or tasks. Then you have your diamonds. These represent gateway activities, for example, decision making. And then you have circles. And the circles are going to represent different events. These help to create, again, the processes. Now, like a cross-functional flowchart, it's not uncommon in a BPMN drawing to also have swim lanes like you see here. Now, swim lanes help us to know what entity or specific person is doing something within the drawing. Don't forget, you're also going to have connecting objects. These are gonna be the lines and arrows that help to let you know what direction your business processes are moving in. Now, don't be afraid to go in and try out a BPMN uh, template on your own by opening up Visio and looking for it. Hey, welcome back everyone. I wanna take a BPMN diagram inside of Microsoft Visio and make some updates to it. 
So if you go to our exercise files, you can open up BPMN1 to try this out. And I'd love to have you do that. I currently have my diagram open and a couple of things to notice. I do have a stencil over here in the shapes task pane that's specifically made up of BPMN shapes. And I have based this diagram on one of Visio's built-in templates. Now, a few things that you can do to quickly make changes again and customize your BPNN diagram. First of all, I've got pools. Pools represent the different entities that might be involved within my BPNN process. A pool, for example, could be represented by a customer or a different company. Company. To update the text in these pools, I'm going to double click. You'll see the text box open. This is going to represent my customer. Then up here, this might represent my company. And this will update my pool names. Now to add additional shapes to my BPN processes, I'm going to come over and select the shape. I can always adjust their current size or drag them over to give myself more room. For example, I need to add a message. So I'm gonna come into my shapes task pane and select the message. I'm gonna come in and drop it. Now you'll notice as I do this, it does add a connector point for it, but it's not currently in connection with the other shapes around it. So what I can do is I can actually select a shape. And again, when I do that, I'll see the auto connect arrows come. And when I click on it, it will actually connect it. Now to connect it to this shape over here, I can again use the auto connect and then I can take the line that it created here, click on it and get rid of it because I don't actually need that line. So now I've added this message into my current process. Another thing I can do is take current shapes and change them. For example, right down here, maybe I need this to not be a task, but a different type of shape. To do that, I can click on the shape and up in my home ribbon tab, I can actually come over to the editing group, select change shape and make this into a gateway option. To update the task, I'm gonna change it from a task to a decision. And this will actually update the text inside of the particular, again, flow shape that I'm using. Additionally, I can also come in and I can change, especially my flow shapes, if I right click on them, you'll notice I can change the task type to a different type of task and it will put a symbol on that specific shape to update it. Again, we'd love to have you try this out. So open up the BPNM1 practice file and give it a whirl. Welcome back everyone. We're ready to create another type of advanced Visio drawing called a value stream map. Now do know that to create a value stream map diagram in Visio, you need to have Visio Professional 2021, 2019, or Visio Professional 2016, or the Visio Plan 2. It's not available in the Visio standard. Now, what exactly is a value stream map? Value stream maps are used in manufacturing companies to help find where waste is a happening within a manufacturing process. So for example, a value stream map can show where extra materials are piling up and show how they're basically going to get shipped to customers and help to improve the process. The first step is to actually create where the problems are happening. So we're gonna create our value stream map to show that first step. So inside Visio, I currently don't have any drawings open. I'm going to go to file and new and base my new Visio drawing on the value stream map template. Now I already have it up here, but if it's not available there, I can search for it by typing in value stream map. And I'll see that as soon as I start my search, it becomes available to me. I can click on it. Again, I'm going to base my new value stream map on US units of measurement. I'm going to create it. What I get is a blank canvas, but most importantly, over here on the left, I'm going to get my stencil that's specific to a value stream map. Now to start, I can again, just come in and look at the different uh, shapes available in the stencil and I can left drag them over. I'm gonna start by bringing in a shape representing my customer. Another great thing I can do is I can duplicate these shapes by selecting the shape and then doing control D as in dog on my keyboard. And then I can get an exact duplicate of that shape. If there's a shape that I need that I don't currently see, I can search for it. Or again, I can just left drag it on once I find it. Notice that as I drag these different shapes around, it's nice because those auto layout guides help me to add them on to, again, my canvas. Now, I also wanna come down and add a couple more of these controls down here. Then to basically connect these shapes together, what I'm gonna do is manually bring in arrows. And you'll see there are different kinds. One of them is a shipment arrow to represent when things are being shipped. For this, I'm gonna drag the shape on. And then what I can do is I can actually rotate the shape 
and drag it where I want it to connect. And you'll notice that as I start dragging the shape next to the other shapes, there are live location points that become available that allow me to actually glue those connector points together so that the shapes become connected. Additionally, you're gonna have further imagery tools like a shipment truck that you can drag on to represent a process of shipping. Now to actually get these shapes to be identifiable, I need to come into the shape, click on it, and then type in what the name of the shape represents. This is my supplier shape. Then maybe this one right here, I might actually have a production control. And then over on the right, that might be my customer. So I'm actually creating now the identification of each shape within the process by typing on it. Again, we'd love to have you try out creating your own value stream map. So go into Visio and base a new drawing on that template. Hi everybody, welcome back. We're ready to take our value stream map and add more detail to it. Remember, we're trying to show how we can improve a manufacturing process. So right now in my value stream map, I've gotten started. I also have a value stream map shape stencil available for me to use. I need to add some more connection arrows to help further again, add detail. To do this, I'm gonna come down and select the manual information arrow. This allows me just to drag a normal arrow onto my value stream map, but remember, all of these shapes have auto connection points. I'm gonna start by taking this arrow and connecting it to the production control shape I have at the top. Then I'm gonna left drag the bottom part and drop it down below. I'd like to do another arrow. So a great trick to remember is that most of these shapes can be clicked on. And then if you do control D, you can create a duplicate. I'm gonna take the next arrow and drag it so it connects and then take it over to the additional shape on the right. Now to help document what these arrows represent, I'm gonna come in and actually add a text box. On the insert menu, I can come into the text box. It'll let me decide whether my text box is going to be horizontal or vertical. I'd like a horizontal text box, so I'm gonna select that. Notice when you bring your mouse pointer into your canvas, it looks like a crosshair. So I'm going to left drag and it will open up again a text box area where I can now type what exactly this shape represents. Now to add more detail to the shape like a border, I can select it, come up to my home ribbon tab, and then utilize the shape styles group to actually add a border around the shape. If I'd like to add, for example, a colored border, I can come in and do that with the line option. Now that I've created that shape, I'd like to add a timeline at the bottom. You'll notice here inside of my value stream map shape stencils, I have a timeline segment. This allows me to basically create a timeline representing how long a particular part of the manufacturing process takes. And I can connect these segments together. So for example, I could say this part takes five days. And then for example, in my assembly section, I can actually come in and I can drag this out and make it wider by coming to, again, the shape section that I want to drag and adjust it. Could come in and maybe the assembly section where the assembly is happening takes two hours. And I can also come in and actually duplicate these sections and connect them together to continue creating again, I'm gonna drag it up just a little bit, the timeline at the beginning of my value stream map. Again, it's a process. This would be creating the first part and then the second diagram would actually document what I'm gonna to do to improve the process that I've created in my first diagram. Again, you can try this out, go to the exercise files and open up the value stream map B practice file to give it a whirl on your own. Hi, welcome back. We're ready to look at different types of shapes and stencils in Visio, specifically 3D shapes. Now, a great way to access a 3D shape inside of Visio is to actually open up a template that has 3D shapes in it. So right now I don't have anything open in Microsoft Visio, but I'm gonna travel up to the file ribbon tab and go into new. And a great way to locate any of the templates that have 3D shapes is to actually search for the word 3D. No space between the three and the D. And you'll see that there are some specific templates in Visio that have the word 3D in their name. And all of these provide shapes on stencils that also have a 3D, uh, again, look to them. And again, for a shape to be 3D, as we'll see, it has a beveled edge. So I'm gonna select the workflow 3D diagram and open it up. And again, I need to select my unit of measurement. We'll do US and click on create. 
So I get, again, the empty canvas, but over on the right in my shapes task pane, specifically what I'm going to see is that there are new stencils, but to the right-hand side of them, it says the word 3D. And what we'll see with any of the shapes in these stencils is that when they are brought onto the drawing canvas, they have a 3D element to them. So let's actually add a few of these and see again what they look like. I'm specifically gonna focus on the workflow steps 3D shape just because these are for a workflow. Also, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit on my drawing to make it a wee bit easier to see the shapes. So all I do is go to the 3D shape, just like I would with a 2D shape, and I'm gonna left drag it onto my canvas. And we'll see that as it gets added, these shapes, again, are just like the other shapes where they have sizing handles where they can be resized and also connected to other shapes. But the biggest difference is that they look like they have a beveled edge to give them that 3D look. Now, I'm also going to come in and send some additional shapes onto my, again, drawing here. And you can see the different shapes getting added. And again, all of these are 3D shapes. And I can size them and I can also connect them to each other like we've done with other shapes. So a 3D shape and a 2D shape are very similar. Now to connect them, I can hover over the shape. Notice I'll see the auto connect arrows. And again, it's going to, again, expect that I wanna to connect to the next shape. And so if I select that, it automatically allows me to come in and easily connect or create a new shape connecting them. But you can see here how the auto connect arrows are trying to help me know who I want the connection to be to. If it's still not connecting the way I want it to, then I could come up and create a connector by turning on my connections tool and then I could manually drag the connection points. Thanks for watching. And again, try this out by opening up one of the 3D templates and try creating some of your own 3D shapes. Hi everybody, welcome back. We need to take a 3D shape and look at how easy it is to format. Now notice I have a drawing with a workflow open and there are 3D shapes in this drawing. I wanna go ahead and select one of the 3D shapes and zoom in a little bit on it just to make it easier to see. Remember, a 3D shape is gonna have that extra bevel on the edge, that's what makes it unique. Now, 3D shapes can be formatted just like a 2D shape, but when you want to add some extra pizzazz, that's when you wanna to go to some of the 3D formatting tools. So to get to any formatting for a shape, I'm gonna go up to my Home Ribbon tab, and I'm gonna come over to the Shape Styles group. Now you can use this to update just the general look of the shape, including the style, and you can even use the line button to update, for example, the outside border. These are things that we've already done in previous lessons. But when you want to really work with the 3D aspect of the shape, then you're gonna want to come to the effects button. Now 2D shapes can also have effects, like for example, a shadow added to them, or you can even give them a glow. That one always makes me laugh a little bit. But with 3D shapes, the additional area that you have is down at the bottom. You have bevel. This allows you again to kind of give the shape a different look as far as the 3D, but really it's the rotation of the 3D shape that allows you to customize the way it looks. Now this is an area where you do need to use discretion because you'll see that as I hover over some of these different 3D rotations, they really make my shape look odd. So they're not adding to the diagram. But as I come in, you can see that some of the ones that I've selected can really kind of change the way it looks and add a different aspect to the shape. Now, if I really want to be able to control how the shape is again rotating on that 3D perspective, I'm gonna come down to the very bottom to 3D rotation options. This takes me to my format shape task pane. Some of the same tools that we've used in the ribbon are redundant here. You can do them in the pane or up in the home ribbon. But when I come down to the very bottom, I have a 3D rotation area. This allows me again to select a different rotation for my shape. Additionally, I can also come in and impact its left and right tilt on an X axis it's up and down tilt on a Y axis, and then on the bottom, I can actually rotate the whole thing in a circle. 
Uh, the big thing to remember here is that all of these need to help add to your shape and not take away from it. And notice at the bottom, there is a reset button. So if you make some changes and they just don't work, you can undo it. Now, as always, we'd love to have you try this out. So in the exercise files folder, please open up Workflow 3D1 and you can play with the 3D shapes there and practice formatting them on your own. Hi, let's take a peek at how you can format a 3D shape inside of a Visio drawing. Now, right now I have a workflow that's been created that I have open. In fact, I even have a 3D shape selected. And what I wanna show you is what makes formatting a 3D shape unique. Basically, you have all the same things that you would have with a 2D shape, but there are some extras that are pretty cool with 3D shapes. So I've selected my 3D shape. I'm gonna actually zoom in on it just a little bit so it's easier to see. And then I'm going to go up to my home ribbon tab. Now, just like a 2D shape, you do have shape styles that will allow you to update the look of the shape. For example, sometimes this will change the fill color of some of the major portions of the shape. Also, you can come in and impact the outline color, like I just turned the outline red. But where things are different with a 3D shape is when you come to the effects area. 3D shapes have additional effects. Now we still have the same normal effects like the ability, for example, to, out, to add an outer shadow or even a glow, but where it gets different is when you come down to the effects button and you look at 3D rotation. This is an area where you can take a 3D shape and actually rotate it and give it a different angle. And you can see as I hover over the different rotations, how they really can change the way my shape looks. And some of them are better and a lot of them are worse. So the idea here is make sure you use these with discretion, but you can see how they can change the angle of the shape. Now, if you really wanna dig deep, you can come down to the very bottom of the menu and select 3D rotation options. This actually opens up the format shape, again, task pane on the right, but down here at the bottom, you have a 3D rotation area. This will allow you to, again, change the rotation that you've picked. And additionally, you can actually add your own rotation and customize it based on an X, Y, and Z perspective. You can see here the different directions. There's a left and right, an up and a down, and then also around, right? So you can really change the way things look by using these tools to help again adjust how those shapes look. Thanks for watching. Please remember that you can always try this out. If you go to the exercise files folder and you open up workflow 3D1, you can actually play with the 3D shapes in that workflow and try it out on your own. So give it a whirl. Hi everybody, welcome back. We're ready to go in and actually add pages to one of our Visio drawings. Now by default, when you come into Visio, much like Microsoft Excel, you'll notice down here on the bottom that I have what it look like sheets, but in Visio they're actually called pages. To insert an additional page into my Visio drawing, I can click right here on the add a page button. It just basically allows me to come in and add a new blank page to my drawing. If I'd like to make a duplicate of the page, I can come to the page, right click on it, and I'll see an opportunity to duplicate. It'll be an exact copy of that page. Now when it comes to doing things like changing the order of the pages, renaming them, for that what I'm gonna do is come right here and I can right click and notice that I can select rename. It highlights much like you would see in Microsoft Excel and I'm gonna call this diagram A. I can hit enter, it saves it. And then for example, my next page that I'd like to rename, I can come in and double click again and I can give it a name. Obviously you can't have two pages with the same name. And if you've created a page that you no longer need, you can actually go to that page, right click on it. Notice you have an opportunity to delete the page. And of course, if the page is deleted, all the content on the page will also be gone. Now, in addition to adding pages, renaming pages, you can also come to a page, left drag it over and change their order but you can also add background elements to your pages. We wanna start by adding a background color. To do this, I'm going to go to the page and then come up to my design ribbon tab. On the design ribbon tab, I'm gonna go over to the backgrounds group. This is over on the right-hand side. 
In the backgrounds group, I can select certain preset backgrounds and it will apply it to just the page that I'm on. Now, a couple of things change in my Visio drawing when I do this. When I add a background, you'll notice that down here on the bottom, I now have a thing called a master page, and it says V background one. The reason it has a V at the beginning of the name is because Microsoft Visio automatically does this when I add a background to one of my drawings. I can add a different background by clicking on a different page. Notice the other page does not have a background background yet. I can come in and go back to the backgrounds button again, and I could select a different color, and you'll notice I get a second one to represent another master page. Now, what exactly is this master page thing that's going on down here? When you add a background element, it adds a master page to your Visio drawing to help, again, let you know what elements are on a particular page. Now, we'd really like you to try out adding some backgrounds and also pages to one of your own Visio drawings. If you need one, go to our Visio exercise files folder and open up the Visio pages one drawing and try adding some background and additional pages to that drawing yourself. Hi, welcome back. We want to be able to edit some of the master pages and add new background colors inside of our Visio drawing. So right now I have two normal diagram pages and also two background pages that Microsoft Visio has helped me insert. The first thing I'd like to do is be able to adjust the background color of one of these background pages. There's a great way to do that. If you select the specific background page and then go up to the design ribbon tab, each of the themes within Visio have a background color associated with them. And you can actually pick different themes and you'll notice that the background color of that associated background master page will update. If you really wanna have control, you can actually go to the variants of that specific theme or even more specifically, come down to the color schemes that are being associated with it. And this will show you the background color of a specific theme, and you can select that. Now, what if I have one background page associated with a specific diagram, and I decide I would like a different one? How can I go about editing that? What I'm going to do is I'm gonna select the actual page, You'll see it's using that green background, and maybe I'd prefer to have it use this other one that's the pink. To do that, I need to go to the actual diagram page and I'm going to right click on it and come to page setup. The page setup box is great for controlling not only how a page prints, its page size, but also the background page it's assigned to. Notice when you come in here, it tells you right now the background page it's using is the V background one, but I'm gonna switch that over to the V background two and apply it. When I do that, we'll see that it updates and now it has the pink background. Now, what if I'd just like to make my own background page that's separate from the ones that Visio has put in for me? For that, I can come up to the Insert Ribbon tab and go to New Page. And you'll see here, it allows me to do three different things. Insert a blank page, add a new background page, or duplicate the page I'm on. Well, background page is what I want, so I get a new box asking me what I'd like to call this new page. I'm gonna call it background three, like you see here, and you'll notice it's already telling me that it will assign it one of the existing master background pages, but I can actually set that to none Click on OK, and then I get a blank page. Now to apply my own choices to this background page, I can go to the design ribbon, and I can actually select from one of the existing themes. And you'll see here that it's not giving me a lot of background colors because I haven't actually picked a background yet. Once I pick a background, then I can go in and update it with the themes. Additionally, I can also come in and, for example, add an icon or a graphic to my background. And by doing this, it will be repeated on any of the pages that are assigned to that background. So I'm just gonna select one of the learning icons that are on the Insert Ribbon tab. I'm going to size this down and put it in the top left-hand corner. And then what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and I would like to take that and repeat it on each page. To do it, I want to take this background three and I'm gonna right click on each of my diagram pages and I'm going to go to page setup and I'm gonna come in and instead of the existing background page that's assigned, I'm going to select that background three page and I can apply it to actually see what it's gonna look like. And this is how I could create consistency in my Visio drawing pages by applying the correct background page to each one. 
Now, we'd love to have you try this out. So go into our exercise files folder, open up the Visio pages to file and give it a whirl. Hi, welcome back everybody. I'm ready to add some headers and footers to my Visio drawing, but it's tricky because there is no header and footer button in Visio. Instead, we're going to be using a tool called borders and titles, but they will remind you of headers and footers. First of all, just notice down here that my drawing has two diagrams on pages and also two background pages. The best place to start when you want to have consistent titles and borders in a Visio drawing with multiple pages is to go to the applicable background page or master page, which is what we're going to do. So I've clicked on the master page for my diagram B and you'll see that it's just a gray background. But by adding my header and footer information on this page, it will mean that any drawings that have this as their background or master page will have a consistent look. So what I'm going to do is come back up to my design ribbon and come over to the backgrounds group and go to the borders and titles button. This is a great menu because you'll see that Visio has several pre-made borders and titles that will contain information that will remind you of a header and footer. All I do to apply it is come in and select the, again, border and title that I want, and it applies it to the background page. Now, if I click on one of the normal pages that's based on that background master page, I'll see the border and titles information actually come up on it. Now, to actually personalize it, I'm going to click back on the background page and go, for example, to the title and double click, and then I can actually type in the correct title. Notice the things like the date and the page number will be coming from your computer. Now, when I click back on the correct page, I'll see the information will update, including the page number. Now, my diagram A doesn't currently have a background for it, or I should say it doesn't have a border and title because I'd like to make one separate. So what I'm going to do is go to the master page assigned to that particular diagram and pick a different border and title for it. This way it'll have something that's a little bit unique. And again, to customize it on this particular page, I'm gonna go back to the background page, come in and double click on the area that I want to customize. And when I go in and actually look at the page, I'll see that it's been updated. To remove that background page information in the border and title, you'll go back to, again, the master page come back to the borders and titles button and just select no border and title. This will remove it and also delete it. So if you re-add it, you'll have to recreate it again. But again, this is the way that you do headers and footers. It's not headers and footers, it's borders and titles. Now we'd love to have you try this out, so please go to the exercise files folder, open up the Visio Pages 3 exercise file, and try adding some of your own borders and titles. Howdy, we wanna make some of our own shapes called custom shapes and then actually add them to a stencil in Visio. So the first step is of course to get a new blank Visio drawing open. A great shortcut for that is Control N on your keyboard. What you'll see is that when you do Control N, it just opens up a new blank Visio drawing. Notice up here at the top. And then I'm ready to create whatever shapes I want. Now on the Home Ribbon tab, there are some basic drawing tools that you can use in the Tools group to help you create your own shapes. So I'm gonna actually use some of the pre-drawing tools. You can also actually draw your own, but since I'm not a great artist, I'm gonna start by selecting the ellipses. And then I'm gonna come in and drag out an ellipses on my, again, blank canvas. Now to add some additional shapes, I'm gonna come up and select a rectangle and then take that and superimpose it over my ellipses. Now I can size each of these shapes, but before I do that, I wanna go back and turn on the pointer tool in the tools group so that it's not trying to draw more shapes, it's allowing me to adjust their size. And again, as I do this, I can use the auto layout guides to help me place things where I want them to go. Then the next thing I wanna do is add some text to one of my shapes. So I'm going to select it and just start typing what I want it to say. Now when it comes to adding formatting, what I wanna do there is get both of those shapes selected. So I can actually just left drag around both the shapes, it highlights them, and then I can come up to my shape styles group on the home ribbon tab and use things, for example, like the fill color, 
and even the lines to add some, again, a darker border around the outside edge and even line color. In addition to that, I can also come in and I can also add effects. For example, like a glow around the outside edge. Now, after my shape has been made, I can continue to edit individual parts of the shape just by clicking on them. What I really want to do is to take this shape and actually make it so that I can use it again. First, I'd like to group the different portions of the shape together. So right now I have both a rectangle and an ellipses and they are both separate shapes. So to make them into one, I'm gonna drag around both of them and then I'm going to actually come up to the home ribbon tab again and go to the arrange group and go to the group button. This allows you to take multiple shapes and basically make them into one. The benefit of this is now when I drag this shape around, it's all one shape. So now I've created my personal shape. The next thing I'd like to do is again, make a copy of it that I can use in future drawings. For that, I'm going to select my shape and come over to my shapes task pane. You'll see it over here. And you'll notice that the only thing it knows to do right now is tell me, well, there's no stencils open, but you have more shape options. I'm going to select this and then I'm going to come to my shapes. Within the stencils, there is a favorites shape where you can take custom shapes that you create and also favorite shapes and add them. It's like bookmarking a shape. I'm going to select favorites and you'll notice that it opens up and shows me the current favorite shapes that I have on it. Now I'm gonna take this shape that I just created and I'm gonna left drag it over onto, again, my shapes task pane and into my favorites stencil. I'm gonna release my mouse and it's gonna tell me that currently the stencil is read only, but if I would like, I can edit it by saying yes, which is what I want to do. I'll see my shape get added to the stencil. Now, if I don't want it to be called master number, like you see master.14, I can actually right click on it and after it's actually been put in, I can come into the shape and in this case, I could rename it, but I'm okay with that name. But what I do wanna do is update my stencil so that I can use it. So I'm now going to click on the save button next to my stencil. To use that shape, all I have to do now is left drag it and it will be added to any new drawings that I again open up because it's now a permanent part of my favorites stencil. Now go into a blank Visio drawing and try making your own shape and adding it to your favorite stencil as well. Give it a try. Welcome back. We're ready to make some custom stencils inside of Visio. So we've already seen how the shapes task pane has the different stencils that are part of the templates and drawings that we create. But what if you could create your own stencil where you could put your own shapes that you've created or shapes from existing stencils to basically make your own stencil just for you. Now, in order to do this, we need to go into the shapes task pane and come to the more shapes option. You'll see a black arrow next to this and this actually allows you to open up a list of the different stencils that you currently have access uh, in your Visio. Down towards the bottom, you'll see an option where you could create your own new stencil based on either US units or metric units. We're gonna use US units and we'll see it open up a new stencil. Now all new stencils are called stencil one, stencil two, minus stencil 12 because of the different new stencils that I've created. You'll also notice that on the right hand side of this stencil, I see a basically Visio drawing diagram with a blue pencil. This indicates that the stencil is currently open and ready for me to edit and add shapes to. Now, in order to add shapes, I need to go in and select the shapes I would like to bring into my new stencil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up an existing stencil. I can still see my new stencil, but I will then take a shape from one of my other stencils, hold down my left mouse button and drag it over the stencil I'd like to drop it in. As I do this, I'll see an area under my new stencil open that says drop quick shapes here. This is going to add them to my stencil. So the idea is I can go into any of my existing stencils and actually come in until I get my shapes and drop them into my new stencil and I can select them from a variety of different stencils that I've recently opened by just hovering and then left dragging them over the top of my new stencil and releasing them. Now, as I add these new shapes on, you're going to notice that now my new stencil has a disc next to it, the universal save button, right? This is where I will be able to save my stencil and give it my own name. 
It's important to note that when you save a stencil, by default, it will save on your computer locally where you're using Visio. So if you want to put this stencil in a different location, this is the time to actually place it there. And stencils actually have a file type called Visio stencil. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and give my stencil a name. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. Now my stencil will update with that new name. Now, as always, we'd love to have you try creating your own stencil. So please go into the custom stencil A file in Visio, open it up from our exercise files and give it a whirl. Welcome back. We want to be able to take custom shapes and add them to a custom stencil. So right now I do have a custom stencil open. You can see it right here, but just a quick review on how you can take a custom stencil and reopen it. So right now my stencil is open. So if I right click on it, you'll notice that I can close the stencil. Now when a custom stencil is closed, how do you reopen it? Remember that stencils are saved locally on your device or wherever you choose when the stencil is created. So to reopen, a custom stencil, I'm going to come here to more shapes and come down to open stencil. Then I'm going to need to navigate to where that stencil has been saved, select it, and then reopen it. And then I'll see it appear in my current list of stencils. Now, right now, the stencil is available for me to drag shapes from, but it's not something that's open in an editing mode so that I can add shapes to it. And what I'd like to do is take these two custom shapes that I've created and add them to this custom stencil so that I can reuse them in future drawings. So to do that, I need to actually edit the stencil. For that, I'm going to right click on it and you'll see that I have an edit stencil option. This opens the stencil up so that I can actually edit the shapes within it. Notice also that the icon next to the stencil updates when I do this to look like a grid with a blue pencil on it. Now I'm going to take one of my custom shapes in my drawing and I'm actually going to left drag it into my stencil. And you'll see what happens is it's actually going to be placed in my stencil and removed from my drawing. So that's an important thing to note when you do this. I'm also gonna take my second shape and do the same thing. I'm going to left drag it into my custom stencil and release it. Now that these two shapes have been placed into my stencil along with the other ones, there's now a disc next to the stencil because I'm going to need to update it with these two additional shapes. So I'm gonna click on save and now I see that it turns back into a blue pencil. This indicates that everything has been updated. Now to use the shapes on the stencil, I can now come in and pick from any of the shapes on my custom stencil, including the custom ones, left drag them on, but the great thing about having them on the stencil is now I can reuse them as much as I want to help me create custom drawings of my own. And this custom stencil will continue to stay open. Now to ensure that it's no longer in editing mode, I'm going to go ahead and right click on it and just select close. This turns the stencil off, but if I want to again be able to use it, I can always reopen it by coming down to open stencil, finding it and opening it back up, now, if I want to edit it, I can right click and edit it, right? When I'm done making changes to it, if I right click on it again, you'll see here that it has a little edit stencil uh, option at the top that's grayed. This lets me know that it's in editing mode. If I click on that again, it turns it off and allows me to keep the stencil open and use the shapes in the stencil without actually having to be in that editable mode. So we'd love to have you try this out. Please open up the custom stencil B practice file. Remember, you will need a custom stencil already created to go through the activity, but create another custom stencil and try adding some shapes, opening and closing it and see how easy it is to create them and work with them on your own. Welcome back. We're ready to take a Visio drawing and save it as a custom template so that we can create new diagrams based on it in the future. So here I have a normal Visio drawing open on my, again, Visio, and I'd like to take it and make it into a template. So for this, we need to go in and save this Visio file into a template. For that, I'm going to go up to the file ribbon tab and do like I normally would to save a Visio document. I'm gonna to come to the Save As menu and then Browse, of course. But at this point, what's important is what the file type is that I select as I save this Visio. So I'm gonna come in and select the third item down from the top under the different Save As types and pick Visio Template. 
The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to where I want my template to be stored. This is something so that I can put my templates in the place where I would like them. I can also rename it if I would like. So I'm just going to add the word template after the file name to make it a little bit easier for me to designate it. But do know that a Visio template file has a different file extension. Then I'm going to click on save. Now you'll see here at the top that it tells me the name of my template file that I've now saved. I'm going to go ahead and close out of it just because I want to create a new drawing based on it. Now to do that, I need to come in and do a new file. But as I do that, I'm going to select a template to get to templates that you've saved on the device or network that you're on. You're going to come down to the bottom middle of the new pane in the backstage view and select templates. Now, of course, there are lots of templates in Visio, but for the templates that you've created under the templates category, you want to look for new from existing, meaning existing templates that you've saved. Then what you'll do is you're going to create your new template, but it gives you one more step. And that is for you to navigate to where your template is located. You'll see right here, I'm selecting my template and notice here, the file type tells me that it's a Microsoft Visio template file. Then I'm going to select create new. Now when my file opens, it's important to notice it looks exactly like my template. However, if I come up here to the top middle and look at the name, it's not a template. It's a new drawing based on that template. And if I would like to have this drawing in the future, I'll need to save it. And it will not be a template file format. It will be a Visio drawing format. So we'd love to have you try this out. Go into Visio, find a favorite Visio drawing and save it as a template. Hey, welcome back everybody. We are ready to actually start creating some Visio diagrams that are connecting to external data sources. Now I'm actually not in Visio right now. I've opened up a spreadsheet to help us get ready to create what's called a pivot diagram. I just want to refresh everybody on what a pivot table is in Microsoft Excel. So I have this big data set and I've actually already created a pivot table on the second sheet. A pivot table is basically taking a large amount of data and analyzing it based on specific columns within the data. And you can see that it creates another table, but it's not analyzing the entire data set. Now, what if I could take this pivot table and actually analyze it inside of a diagram in Visio? Hence, we get this idea called a pivot diagram. So a couple of pointers on getting your data ready before you create your pivot diagram. And these go for creating pivot tables as well. It's a great idea to have column headers in the top row of your data source. So in this case, Microsoft Excel. And then another great pointer is to not have any entire blank rows of data because that will stop the data analysis. And remember that we're connecting Excel and Visio together when we do this. So now that I've seen what the spreadsheet looks like, I'm going to go ahead and jump back into Microsoft Visio. When I get into Visio, I'm actually going to be basing my new pivot diagram on a template. So we're going to come up to the file ribbon tab, go down to new, and then I'm going to search for the pivot diagram. If I just type in the word pivot and do a search, we'll see that pivot diagram is one of the template choices inside of Visio. I'm going to pick that. And then of course, I'm gonna select the US measurement for my units. And then it's going to bring up the data selector tool. This is where you connect to your external data source. Take a peek at some of the choices we have. We have Microsoft Excel. We also have Access, which is Microsoft's database application, SharePoint, we even have ODBC data sources, which really opens the door to a lot of other types of data storage. But in this case, we're gonna use Excel. Now I need to browse to where my file is located. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in, find my, again, spreadsheet, and then I'm gonna click on next. Now, if your sheet has multiple sheets within it, it's going to ask you which sheet you're going to want to base your pivot table on. So make sure you select the correct sheet, which is what I'm doing. And then also let the data selector tool know if your first row has those column headings, like I mentioned, and it does, so we're good to go. Then I'm gonna click on next again. Now this is where Visio is looking at your data in Microsoft Excel. This will let you see what column headers will be included in your Visio diagram and also what rows. 
And at this case, it's actually selected everything. So I'm ready to finish. Now, when it first comes over, it's not going to look like a lot's going on. But notice over here on the left, a new task pane has been added to Visio. Also, you get a new ribbon at the top called Pivot Diagram. These are the two areas that you can use to help give your, again, Pivot Diagram more detail. For example, right here, right now, I can see that my Pivot Diagram is focused on the total field. If I come in, for example, I could ask one of the other fields to also be added to give my diagram more detail. So what I've done is I've now added the office fields to my data and notice how much more now is being added to my pivot diagram. Also notice that it automatically resizes my drawing to make room for all these additional fields. Now we'd love to have you try this out. So please go into the practice files folder. There is a spreadsheet called pivot one. Remember to go in and open up a new template, search for the pivot diagram, and then use that pivot one practice file as the beginning of your new pivot diagram. Give it a whirl. Hey everybody, welcome back. We're ready to take a pivot diagram in Visio and edit it. Now, if you need a pivot diagram to try this out with, go to our exercise files and open up my pivot diagram. It'll give you a pivot diagram that you can play with. Now, in my current pivot diagram, again, you'll always see some unique features when your Visio drawing is based on the pivot diagram template. First of all, you're gonna get the pivot diagram task pane that opens up, and then also you get the pivot diagram contextual ribbon. These are two areas that you'll know that you're in a pivot diagram. And again, this pivot diagram is tied to some Excel data, but it could be tied to data in other sources like Microsoft Excel or an ODBC database, for example. Now, if I would like to make some changes to my pivot table diagram in Visio, I need to utilize the areas that we've already mentioned. So first of all, for example, right now mine is focused, for example, on seeing the dates, the different things occurred. If I come over here into, again, the pivot table diagram, I can actually check off additional fields. These are value fields from my Excel data. And notice now I've added ticket data and also the amount of tickets sold. And it's now being, again, diagrammed in Visio. Over here on the top, I have my columns of data. What I can do here is actually select the top level. Notice it puts, again, selection arrows over this area, and I can come in, and right now it's focused on the office, but say, for example, I'd like to change that to travel locations. What I see will happen is that it's actually going to update now, and rather than being focused on the offices where the tickets were sold, now it's focused on the specific travel locations. Now, this is allowing me to, again, add the data but remember, it's connecting to Excel. So sometimes when you go in to update the data, you may notice that it can take a quite a bit more time for the switch over to happen. Now I'm focused on dates. Now, sometimes if you click on one area and you come in and select an additional one, it will tell you that you have to select a different shape in the pivot diagram because you're selecting a shape that's not at the top level. So that's something that's important when you try to do something. If it doesn't work, try to select the top level and then add that additional piece of information in. And your pivot table diagram is going to, again, update depending on what you select. The other thing you can do is change the layout. For this, you're actually going to click on the top level again, go to the pivot diagram ribbon, and come to the alignment button on the left-hand side in the layout group. This allows you to actually change the layout so that, for example, now it's aligned from the right to the left, or I could pick a center alignment, keeping in mind that it could make your diagram quite a bit bigger when you do this. And pivot table diagrams can get really big, like you can see here, because we're focusing on a lot of different data. Last thing to remember is that if your pivot data updates in Excel or whatever data source it's in, to ensure that your data inside of your Visio drawing is up to date, you need to come to the pivot diagram ribbon tab and come to the far left-hand side and make sure that you refresh that data source. This will make sure that if there are changes in my Excel data, they're up to date in my data in Visio. The refresh is not automatic. Also, if that Excel spreadsheet moves, it's important that I come in and go to my change data source. This will let me reconnect if the spreadsheet moves and make sure that my connection between Excel and Visio is solid. Finally, don't forget that under that same refresh menu, you have data options. This lets you see again the name 
of your data and also additional features that will be in your pivot table diagram, like having a title and a legend. All right, we want you to try it out. So go into the exercise files, open up my pivot diagram and try editing it on your own. Welcome back everybody. We're ready to try a different type of Visio diagram that can be based on Microsoft project data. I'm actually not inside of Visio right now. I'm in an application called Microsoft Project. It's all about planning tasks and keeping track of projects. You'll see that we're in a view right now called the Gantt chart view. On the left, a Gantt chart is made of a list of tasks. And on the right, you'll see a horizontal, again, view of those tasks where each task is called a Gantt bar. And it is, as I mentioned, horizontal. What if we could create this in Microsoft Visio? Let's give it a try. I'm gonna come back down to Microsoft Visio. You'll see that currently I don't have any files open because I'm gonna base my new, again, Gantt chart on a template. So we're going to come up to the file ribbon tab and go down to new, and I'm going to search for the Gantt chart template inside of Visio. Now Gantt is spelled G-A-N-T-T, -T, just in case you're wondering. There is a template here called the Gantt chart template, and I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to go ahead and create my new Gantt chart. Now it's really important here that when I open up a new Visio drawing based on this template, it gives me these Gantt chart options. These allow you to create really a Gantt chart from scratch. I can start by selecting the number of tasks I want to have created. I can select the units that I want for my Gantt chart to be created in. I can select, for example, the format of the duration of the tasks. And then also you'll see here, I can pick the start and finish dates. So if I want it to go a little bit longer, for example, I can elongate that schedule. Then I'm gonna click on okay. Now this will actually create my Gantt chart for me. And again, each of these is an individual shape, but as a whole, I can click on it and it will actually allow me to drag the entire thing and bring it up into my new Visio drawing. Now, a couple of things to notice. Over here on the left, if I look at my shapes task pane, I have a Gantt chart shape stencil that I can add new shapes to my new Visio Gantt chart. Also up in the ribbon, I have a Gantt chart ribbon that comes up only when I use the template based on the Gantt chart. And again, this would allow me to go back into my Gantt chart options where I started. And notice I can't add any more tasks than what I started with, but I could come in and edit some of the other units in my Gantt chart. Now this is how you create one from scratch. So again, I'd love to have you try it out, go in and create a brand new Visio drawing based on the Gantt chart template. Hey everybody, welcome back. We're ready to actually build our own Gantt chart in Visio based on existing Microsoft project data. So I do want you to see that I do have a project file that we're going to use to actually create our Gantt chart data in Microsoft project. Also project is installed on my device and for this process to work correctly, you do need to have project uh, installed on the computer you're working with or project online. Now I have this file, but again, I wanna go ahead and go into Visio and actually have my Gantt chart be rendered in Visio. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, it might be that with Visio, I'll have more ability to edit the Gantt chart than I would inside of Project. Now, to get started, I need to again create a new Visio drawing based on the Gantt chart template. So, I'm going to come to File and New. And again, remember that Gantt is actually spelled G A N T T, in case you've forgotten. And then I'm going to come in and pick Gantt chart. Now at this point, again, after I select that I'll be creating my new Gantt chart on US measurements, you'll see here that it's asking me if I want to have Visio just create generic Gantt chart data for me. I don't because my data already exists in that project file. So I'm gonna cancel out at this point and I'm in a blank canvas, but the good news is up here at the top, I have my Gantt chart contextual ribbon. And over on the left, I also have my Gantt chart shapes in the shapes task pane. It's the Gantt chart contextual ribbon that's critical when you're going to be importing project data in for your Gantt chart. So that's where we're going to head back up to the Gantt chart contextual ribbon. On the right hand side, you've got a manage group that helps you make a connection between your project data and uh, Visio. So in here, I need to import my data in. So the very first thing that happens when you click on import data 
is the import project data wizard pops open. And it's going to ask you if you want to input your data or if your data already exists in a file. And in our case, the top option, information that's already stored in a file, is exactly what we want. So then we're going to click on next and pick our file type. In this case, it's a Microsoft project file, but I could also do an Excel file or a text file. So I've got a few options there. Then I need to browse to where my project file is. And keep in mind in our exercise files folder, uh, you do have a link to this same project file. It's called Gantt one. So if you want to try this out, you can use that file for it. We're going to actually click on open. And then the next few steps are just asking us how we would like our Gantt chart to be rendered. For example, what are the units going to be broken down into? And notice you can do days, weeks, months, quarters, years. I'm going to keep mine months and weeks. Then it's going to ask which type of tasks I want included. I want all. And then it's going to just, again, make sure that I want the following items in my Gantt chart, and I'm going to click on Finish. Now, depending on the size of your, again, project file, this can take several moments to happen. Mine isn't all that big. When it comes in, it's just a great big chart and table. What I need to do is click on the corners, but be careful because you'll notice when you click, it's going to try to select different parts of the Gantt chart. You want to get it selected so that you see sizing handles all the way around the outside border. Then I'm going to left drag it to where I want it to go inside of my Visio again diagram. Now notice too that it's really big. And so you need to know that when you create one of these Gantt charts, it's very common for them to go over multiple pages. Now a few other things that you can do to help edit your Gantt chart inside of Visio. A couple things I like to do is after I have my Gantt chart selected, I'm going to go up to the design ribbon and apply a different theme just because it's going to make my Gantt chart a little bit easier for me to see. So you can see here that depending on the choices you make, it may make it visually more appealing. Additionally, back on the Gantt chart contextual ribbon, there are a few other things I can do. For example, I could come to a column and click on it in my Gantt chart. And I can right click and from project, because remember we have a connection between project and this data, I could actually come into my project data and select an additional, again, column from my project data that I would like to actually bring in to this particular Gantt chart. So for example, I could say, you know, I'd like to see the actual finish of these tasks and it will actually insert that column in and allow me to edit what I'm seeing inside of Visio. If I want to add additional things like titles and things like that, then I can use some of the tools inside of Visio for that process. So as always, we'd love to have you try this out. Please go to the exercise files folder and try creating your own Gantt chart using project data. Welcome back. We're ready to create a timeline view out of project data. Now, why is the timeline view so, so popular? It's a great view because it allows you to just see on a very simple horizontal bar the dates that certain tasks are going to occur. And you can also create a timeline view inside of Microsoft Visio. For this, we're going to come into Visio. I currently do not have any drawings open and go to the file ribbon tab, click on new and do a search for timeline, all one word in my templates. Now you'll see that there are a few different ones that come up, but we specifically want the one that has the word project in front of it because that's where our data source is. It's a project file. So I'm gonna click on project timeline and it takes me again into a new drawing based on the project timeline template. You'll see over on the left that you get the timeline shapes, stencil open, and up in the ribbon, you have a new ribbon called timeline, which is contextual and only opens when you base your Visio drawing on the timeline project template. Now we have existing project data. So you can see here that of course Visio will make suggestion data that you can update, but because we already have data, we can actually import it into project and actually have our Visio drawing be based upon it. So I'm going to click on timeline and come over to the timeline group on the left hand side. And I do have an import data option. Again, we're going to be connecting to an external data source, which is project. So when I click on import data, I'm going to browse to where my file is and do know that in our uh, exercise files folder, there is a, another project file called timeline one that you're more than welcome to use so that you have something to base your own timeline on when you build it in Visio. So give that a try. So I'm going to click on open and then follow through with the timeline import wizard. The next step asks me which level of tasks in my project file I would like to have in my timeline. 
timelines can get really packed. So for this one, I'm just gonna pick my summary tasks. These are the main tasks in my project and it's gonna simplify my uh, timeline view. The next one is what I want things to look like. You'll see here you have different choices on what the timeline, uh, again, intervals are. And you can play with these and then what information I want the properties for my timeline to be based on. Again, depending on the size of your project file, it can take a little bit of time. But with mine, you can see here that it really comes in pretty quickly. And it's a simplified view of the major tasks within my uh, project. And the nice thing about having it here in Visio is that I can make changes to it. Now up in the ribbon, just a couple of things to notice. There is a configure button. This allows you to just go out and make sure that your timeline is set up correctly with your project file. You also have a date and time option. This would allow you again to select your timeline file again and update that information and re-import it back in. As far as changing the look of everything, you can use the design ribbon tab to again come in and update the theme, for example, that's applied. And also you could add a background color to your timeline. And also you could add borders and titles to uh, again, give it a title at the top and bottom or do that on the master pages. Thanks so much for joining us and try this out by going into the exercise files folder and try making your own timeline. Remember the project files in there and you can use it. Hey, welcome back. We are ready to create a Visio drawing based on Microsoft Access data. Now, if you're not familiar with Access, no big deal. It is a database application that is a Microsoft tool. It's been around for a long time, but it's also a great tool to base Visio drawings on. So we're actually going to connect to the database and then select what rows of data out of that database information that we would like to have in our Visio diagram. So for this, we need to start with a new blank Visio page. So I'm going to come in and go to file and new and open up a new blank drawing. And of course, we'll base it on US units. So from our blank drawing, what I need to do is utilize a new ribbon called the data ribbon to help me connect to my access database. So up on the data ribbon, I'm gonna come into the external data group. This is where you can import data from other applications like Project, Excel, and Access, and actually create diagrams based on that information. So this is a custom import. I'm gonna come in and select my file type. It's going to be a Microsoft Access database. Notice you can also do SharePoint lists, SQL Server databases, ODBC, lots of options there. Then I'm going to navigate to where my database is. Now do know that in the practice files or exercise files folder, you do have a database, an access database you can use called My Customers. So please check that out. Also databases are divided into uh, tables, much like an Excel spreadsheet is divided into sheets. So this is showing me the different tables in my database and I'm gonna be using the customers table. Then I'm gonna click on next. Now the next thing is within that table, what data do I want to include? So these are my columns. And then you'll see I also have my rows. This would allow me to not include all the data, but at this point I do want everything. Then I'm gonna click on next and finish. Now before my diagram is built, I'm gonna see this new task pane open up over on the right. This is called the external data task pane and it lets me see my access data inside of Visio. And what I have done here is I've basically connected them together. Now what I can do is I can take rows of data and drag them onto my diagram. So let's say for example, I'd like to take any of my customers that start with a letter A and actually bring them on. And so I'm gonna start dragging them on and you'll see here that as I do this, it starts creating little nodes representing those customers. And you'll see here that once I've dragged them on from my external data, it shows a little linking icon. This makes sure that if my, again, access data updates, that my nodes will update. But here's the other thing that's super important to remember. If your access data or your database data updates, Visio does not automatically update. So it's really important that you come up to that same data ribbon tab and click on the refresh button. This makes sure that your table that's in your external data and your nodes are always refreshed to each other. So I just did a refresh and you can see here how the refresh data box tells me. Now, what are some of the things I can do to update some of this data? I can left drag around it and I can come into my, again, home ribbon tab 
And I can actually update the look of the nodes just using my home ribbon tab to change the formatting of some of these shapes, right? I can actually update those a little bit. Another thing I can do back on the data ribbon tab is I can also come to the far right hand side to the advanced data graphics group and I can pick from a few styles here. This will just update. Uh, again, I have to have my shape selected. Let me do that and then we'll try it one more time. And this will allow you to update the look of, again, the shapes and their corresponding information. And all of these shapes are typable and clickable, so I can actually add to the content that's here. But the idea is we're taking database information that's stored in another application, and we're actually able to create diagrams from that information. It's pretty cool. So please try this out, open up a blank Visio drawing, and again, go in to the data ribbon tab and actually try importing it. The access database is called My Customers. Give it a try. Hey everybody, we want to try to create a macro in Microsoft Visio. Now, first of all, when you look at what a macro is, it's basically a set of steps that can be done for you. It is an executable file. And in the past, macros have gotten a bad slack or a bad rap, I should say, because people would actually put viruses into them. But they are a way to save a lot of time. When you record a macro, you basically record yourself doing those steps. You can also create macros using VBA, Visual Basic Applications Code, language. In our case, we're going to record our macro. So if you set up things, you'll see that I have a developer ribbon tab open in my Visio drawing. This is how you get to your macro functionalities in Visio. And this ribbon is actually hidden. So you may need to go into your Visio ribbon options and make sure it's unhidden. When you're ready to record a macro, you're going to come up to the record macro button. The first step is to give your macro a name. I'm just going to go ahead and call this update connectors. I'm not putting any spaces in my name. And also my name has to start with a letter like you see here. And additionally, my name has to be unique. Now I can also actually have a shortcut key for my macro and include a description. My macro is going to store just inside of this Visio drawing. And that's important because I know it will always be where I need it to go. When I click on OK, I'll see that up in that same developer ribbon tab, the code group has a few changes on it. First of all, I now have a pause recording button that would allow me to stop recording my macro. Also, I have a stop recording button that would actually stop recording my macro and complete it. Now, after you're done with a macro, the only way to edit that macro is either to record over the top of the existing macro or actually to go into the visual basic. Now, in my case, I want to do a couple of things. I want to update the style of the connectors in my Visio drawing. So at this point, everything I do will be recorded. The amount of time it takes me to do those steps is not what's critical. It's where I click. So I'm going to go to my home ribbon tab. A great trick to select all the different connectors in this drawing is to go over here to the select button and notice there is a select by type option that will allow me to come in and actually choose what part of my drawing I'm selecting. And in this case, it'll be all my connectors, containers, and callouts. This drawing only has connectors. So you'll see how it puts again, a line around all the connectors in my drawing. On my home ribbon tab, I actually have connector styles. This will allow me to actually go in and change the look of the connectors going between the different shapes on my drawing. I would also like to add a text box. So I'm gonna to come to the insert ribbon tab, go to the text box button, and I'm gonna actually draw a horizontal text box at the top to just add a generic title. Now that's going to be my macro. To finish the macro, I'm going to return to the developer ribbon tab and click on stop recording. Now my macro is done and it's actually been saved. Now to make sure I still have this macro, the next time I open the file, I need to save my file as a macro enabled Visio diagram. To do that, I'm gonna to go to the file ribbon tab, come to save as, and again, browse to where I want my file to be stored. I'm gonna save it on my desktop. And then right here where it says Visio drawing, instead I'm gonna come down and say macro enabled drawing so that if someone opens this file up, they'll know that macro's inside of it. And by saving it, I'm also saving my macro.
When I click on save, you'll notice that nothing changes, but now that macro's in there so that I can use it in the future. It will do those same steps. It will update the connectors and add the text box to the drawing. Again, we'd love to have you try this out. So go into the practice files folder, open up the Visio drawing called my update macro and try recording a macro inside of it. Welcome back. We want to actually record a macro and then try that macro out. So I'm inside a new org chart that I've created and I'd like to add some consistent formatting. To do this, I'm going to record a macro and then basically undo what the macro does and try it out to see if it works. So up on my developer ribbon tab, I'm gonna come into the record macro button and the name for this macro is just org update. Again, I'm not using any spaces in my macro name. This macro will just be stored in the current Visio drawing and I'm gonna click on okay. Now, the next thing I want to do is I would like to go in and just update the theme of my org chart. So on my design ribbon tab, I'm going to apply a new theme and you'll see that as I try out different themes, it updates the look of my organizational chart. The next thing I'm gonna do is on that same design ribbon while I'm recording my macro, I'm also going to apply again, a specific border to my org chart. This will add a new background page on the background page, I'm gonna come in and actually type in the title for this org chart. It'll also put in the date, and then I'm gonna to return to my normal diagram view. Now I've updated again and added the features that I want in my macro. I'm now gonna to return to the developer ribbon tab and come to the code group and stop recording that macro. Now, if I come to the macros button that's directly to the left, I'll see my macro has been stored inside my file. A great way to test drive your macro is to now go back and undo those things that were just added. This will not delete your macro. The macro is actually stored separately from the undo. So I'm gonna click on the undo button and tell all those features that I added, including the title, the master background page, and the theme changes have been taken out of my org chart until it gets back to the way it started. Now I'm going to go to my macros button. This will show me any macros that are currently stored in my Visio diagram. I'm going to select the appropriate macro and I'm gonna click on run. And I'll see that all the updates, including the new background title has been added, the new theme has been added. So my macro is indeed working. Now the last thing I need to make sure of is that I come into file and save as and I browse and when I go in to save my macro, I wanna make sure that I save it as a Visio macro enabled template, actually, sorry, a Visio macro enabled drawing so that in the future that macro will be stored inside of my Visio drawing so I can use it again. Great, we want you to try this out. So please go into the exercise files folder, open up the my org drawing and try creating that macro yourself. Hey everybody, welcome back to Visio. I am going to talk now about an important element in Visio called a shape sheet. Now everything in Visio, every page, every shape is part of something. And all the information about those items is stored in what's called a shape sheet spreadsheet. It's basically a table that has all the details of those items. Now it's gonna have things like the height, width, angle, color, and all those attributes that help to make your drawing at all those different levels. Now to access the shape sheets of a drawing, you actually have to be in what we call developer mode. To make sure you're in developer mode so that you can open the shape sheets up, you need to go to your Visio options. So I've actually opened up a Visio drawing. You can open up any Visio drawing to access the shape sheets. But then we're gonna go into our options by going to file and all the way down to the bottom left-hand corner to the options button. Within the Visio options box, we're gonna come over to the left-hand side and select advanced. Advanced. And then you need to scroll all the way down to the very bottom to the general section and make sure that the checkbox for run in developer mode is checked. So it needs to be filled in. Now to access a specific part of, again, the shape sheets of your drawing, what you're gonna need to do is make sure that you right click on the appropriate thing that you want to open. So for example, I'm gonna come to one of the shapes in my drawing and right click on it and go up to the very top. And what I'll see now is that I can access the shape sheet for that specific item just by clicking. Now it opens in its own freestanding window and unfortunately these don't really dock. So what you can do is come to the sides of them and basically 
size them down so they're not quite so big. Also, when the shape sheet is open, you'll see a new ribbon open up at the top inside of Visio that will say shape sheet design on it. Now, there are different parts of the shape sheet. So depending on, uh, again, what element you've clicked on, that's the shape sheet that you're going to see. But for example, if I close this shape sheet, and rather than seeing the shape sheet for one of the uh, shapes on my drawing, I'd like to see the shape sheet, for example, for my page. If I go up to the developer ribbon, and then on my developer ribbon, I go to the shape design group, and then I come into show shape sheet. You'll notice that I can turn it on now for the page that I'm on. And again, it appears in its own freestanding window. Now I can again, resize this window and make it smaller, but think of it as a spreadsheet telling me about exactly how this page is aligned. I'm gonna go ahead and close that one. Now, if I right click on a shape again and go to shape sheet, and again, I'm gonna size this uh, down a little bit. What you're gonna see is that this is really like a property sheet for this specific shape. It's telling me about where it's located. It's telling me about all kinds of information. And if I click on anything within a row, I'll actually see on my shape sheet ribbon, up here it will actually tell me the formula for that item. In this case, it's what department it belongs to. So the idea with shape sheet is they allow you to, in a very detailed way, go in and control how the different elements that make up a Visio drawing work together. To close your shape sheet, all you have to do is click on the X in the top right hand corner. Now again, we'd love to have you try this out. So go into your exercise files folder, open up any of the Visio drawings there, but we do have one in there called shape sheets that if you'd like to open it up or shape sheet, I should say, you could try to open up the shape sheets inside of that drawing yourself and give it a whirl. Welcome back. I'm ready to print my Visio drawing and then make sure that it's saved to cloud storage. So the first thing to do is have your Visio drawing open. Again, in the exercise files folder, we do have a drawing there for you. It's called My Basic Network Diagram A. Open it up and you can try this out. Now to print my Visio drawing, I'm just gonna go to File and then down to Print in the backstage view. And the thing to remember here that's really useful is the print dialog box has some great tools. First of all, notice you can actually print just the current page or all the pages of your Visio drawing. You can also change the orientation. In this case, it's not doing me a whole lot of good. Additionally, I can also come in and I can edit information, for example, that I want to have as a header and footer if there is any. Right now I don't have any, but this would allow me to add it using this option. And after I just click on the print button and it's ready to go. Don't forget you can also change it from color to black and white. Now the other thing is when you save a Visio file, we've been saving it locally, but a great place to save Visio files is OneDrive. Now OneDrive and OneDrive for Business are the cloud storage tools that come for users that are connected to Office 365. And Microsoft Office 365 is of course Microsoft's version of the applications that we're all used to that run in a web browser. Now I'm already logged into my OneDrive for Business account, so it's really easy for me to save directly to it from inside Visio desktop. To do this, I'm going to go up to the file ribbon tab and I'm going to come down to the save as ribbon. And then notice I have my different options here. I'm going to select my OneDrive account, select the folder, and then I can give my Visio drawing a different name or I can just click on save. And my Visio drawing is going to be uploaded to my Visio, uh, again, OneDrive for business account. So it's great because once you log into OneDrive, you can save directly to your OneDrive for business from within Visio. You can also do the same thing with SharePoint Online if you have permission to do so and you've logged into your Office 365 account. Now, as always, we'd love to have you try this out. So get into the exercise files folder, open up the My Basic Network Diagram A. Make sure you've already logged into your OneDrive drive and then try saving your Visio drawing to it. Super easy. Hi, welcome back. We're ready to do a review of a drawing to get it ready to actually be used. So I have a drawing opened in Visio again in the exercise files folder. If you go in and open up my basic network diagram A, you can use it for this process. Now inside of Microsoft Visio, there is a ribbon dedicated to helping us get ready for a diagram to actually be released to the world. And it's the review ribbon tab. Now it does a variety of things. First of all, we've got the proofing group that allows us to 
do spell check. You also have your thesaurus. If you just can't think of a word, this can help you out. You also have your accessibility checker. This is for people that might, again, have disabilities to help make sure that you're being inclusive with your drawing. Then you also have the translation tool. But what I'm interested in is the shape report. What this allows me to do is, again, look at, for example, a drawing that I have, and it will actually go through and help me to know an inventory in this case, for example, of what's in my drawing. And a really in-depth drawing, this can be helpful to let you know the number of certain types of shapes that you have. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this one. This one is just built into, again, the template that this drawing is based on, which is a network diagram. And then I'm gonna click on Run. Now it asks me again what type of output I'd like from my report. In this case, an Excel spreadsheet's great. And I'm gonna click on OK. Now in Microsoft Excel, it opens up a new workbook where it has input the information, letting me know the certain types of shapes I have in my network diagram. Let's me know how many clouds I have, how many laptops, and how many connectors. And this can be useful because it helps you know what your drawing is made up of. Now this file is not currently connected to my Visio drawing, so I would need to save it separately if I want to have a copy of it for use later. But again, it's helping me to have information about about that drawing so that I can better manage it in the future. Hey, try this out. Again, go into one of the drawings or that network diagram A drawing that's in the exercise folder and try running your own report. You will need Microsoft Excel to do it. Welcome back. We want to be able to take this Visio drawing and actually have it be exported to Microsoft Word. Now there's some great options for that. On my Again, file ribbon tab. I'm gonna come in the backstage view and select export. Right here in the menu, you'll see that you have an option to create a Word document from your Visio drawing. All you do is select create Word document and then create document again. And over here, it will show you again how it can export your information. It's a preview uh, of the drawing to Microsoft Word. Right here, you'll see that it can also include certain parts or disclude certain parts on the settings menu. And then we're gonna click on export. Now, Microsoft Word's gonna open up and you'll see here a new blank document that actually is the name of your drawing comes in and it's going to connect all the different pieces, including one that actually shows the drawing and then all the details of the drawing as well and also each of their parts. This is a separate, again, a file from your Microsoft Visio drawing, so you'll need to save this, but it's almost like a report of your Visio drawing. Now back inside of Visio, I'm gonna head back in there one more time. I would also like to be able to take this Visio drawing and save it as a JPEG. For that, I'm gonna go back up to the file ribbon tab again and come down to export. And you'll see that I do have an option to see all my available file types that I can actually export a Visio drawing as. When I click on this, I actually have an option to take this drawing and export it as a JPEG. When I click on this, it's going to actually then ask me to come down and click on my save as. And right here, you'll see that the JPEG file format is selected. When I click on save, it also is going to ask me to select my JPEG output options. For example, what color format I wanna use? Am I gonna use RGB or do I wanna use YCC? I can change that or grayscale. And then also, do I, do I want a different resolution? And then I'll click on okay. Now my original Visio drawing is still here because when I export it, it makes a copy of it. One final one that is pretty common is to export a Visio drawing as what's called an AutoCAD. AutoCAD is another software application that's really commonly used for drafting, especially in manufacturing and, in, and, uh, and other manufacturing industries. So to do that one, I'm gonna come to the file ribbon tab, go down to export, and of course change my file type and I'm gonna select AutoCAD drawing. And then of course, save as. And we'll see here that again, the save as type will be an AutoCAD drawing and I'm gonna click on save. And that will allow me to then take that exported Visio drawing that's now a file, an AutoCAD file format and open it up inside of AutoCAD and continue to add further detail to the drawing. Hey, try this out, go into the exercise files folder, open up the My Export Visio drawing and try exporting it in some different file formats like AutoCAD or even JPEG. 
Hey, everybody, we really appreciate you joining us for this advanced Visio class. Please check out other Learn It courses online. And as always, Visio is your go to tool when it comes to creating diagrams. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, we also offer live classes in office applications, professional development, and private training. Visit learnit.com for more details. Please remember to like and subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for choosing Learn It.